All right, if I've dotted my I's and crossed my T's, then this should be streaming. Uh, hi, I'm Waylene McCulley at the Starkle Planetarium, and um, just going to have you follow me along as I dive into some rabbit holes, and I'll share with you some of my favorite uh, sites for finding uh, different types of information, uh, mostly pictures and videos, that sort of thing. I'm going to start, however, let's see if I can switch this over, showing the planetarium's website. And oh, I see a chat. Uh, hello, Jeff. It's my husband testing things out for me. Uh, let me go ahead and go to our events calendar. Just want to let you know that we've started our summer um, schedule. And that means that we will not have Saturday night programs, but we will have matinees on uh, Tuesday afternoons and on Thursday mornings. And then on, uh, let me see, June 20th there, see it on the calendar, we'll also have two public programs uh, that are in Spanish, and those will be right before the regular matinees. So it's kind of busy. Um, we are a bit short-staffed for the summer. And uh, so in between doing these shows, uh, we're also running uh, shows uh, for groups like you would with school groups, really. It's field trips, uh, summer camps, day camps, that sort of thing. Um, and that reminds me also, yes, something else that we have available are uh, telescopes for rental. But I do want to I do want to tell you, call us ahead of time. We can't really do last minute on this because we don't have our staffing uh, but it is quite a deal to uh, rent one of our telescopes and find out if you like using large telescopes. Um, I myself, I like large telescopes, but I find that small telescopes and binoculars are far more portable. So that's usually my go to for um, observing stuff in the real sky. Also, if you're interested in the real sky, I will switch over to there we go. I'll show you this is the uh, uh, on the online version of Stellarium, which we use a lot for our classes here at Parkland, and I certainly enjoy using it on the desktop. The website version is not as uh, highly featured, but it's a lot of fun, and it's right there. You don't need to install anything. And I'm just wheeling the, uh, the mouse wheel so I can zoom in on the uh, western horizon where we have two, count them, two planets, Mars and Venus. Mars is not at its brightest. Uh, it was a lot brighter last uh, late fall, early winter. Venus, of course, is spectacular in its brightness, certainly outshines all of the stars. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, yeah, this is certainly a lot more stars than we can see from um, our own backyards. But it is summertime, and that means my favorite star, this one right here called Antares, which, yes, I like it because it's red and it's sparkly, and its name means not Mars. It really does look a lot like Mars, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, lately everything's looked kind of red in the sky because we've got a lot of, uh, smoke from, uh, distant wildfires in the sky. Uh, my husband took an amazing picture of the sun yesterday. It was so, so red and I didn't stay up long enough to see the moon. Uh, but I heard that the moon was very, uh, very reddish orange, uh, as well. All right, so I wanted to show you some of the websites that I go to for different types of information. Now, the first one, it's an older website, but they still kind of they still update it with uh, new images. And this is the uh, uh, the website is photojournal.jpl.nasa.gov. I usually just uh, um, search Google for NASA Photo Journal, and it pops up. And what I like about it is even though it's an older web page and I don't think it's very mobile friendly, but this is um, me looking for images that I can download to then install in our planetarium system. Now, when we got our planetarium system upgraded in 2018, um, we, um, we got an amazing capability uh, called Data to Dome where we get feeds from some sites and we're able to then easily download and install directly into the system. 
However, for some things, I do still search for um, images separately so that I can uh, perhaps download and modify. Maybe if it's a Mars panorama, I want to then use it in um, usually GIMP. I don't use Photoshop very often uh, to remove the, uh, the sky so that I can use it with an artificial sky. And uh, this is a great place to start for me, especially with the solar system objects. So let's say, hey, are there any uh, recent images of Jupiter? Oh, look, here's Jupiter's moon, Io. Um, I still say Io. That's okay. I don't think it cares how I pronounce its name. Oh, by the way, if my display looks strange, I should say if my display looks strange, let me go ahead and just put my face up there. Uh, it's because I have a forced dark mode on my browsers because I've got a weird, you know, problem now with reading on the screens, but older sites like this one, it means that, um, the colors don't always, they don't always play nice because they're not set up for dark modes. Um, let's see, I could go ahead and just click on the picture and it takes me to the page. What I get is, um, a preview version of the image. Uh, the title, the uh, file name uh, follows their convention here, and then a wonderful long description. Frequently, I'll take the description and then I will uh, pare it down and put it in the planetarium system so that our presenter can read it to refresh themselves on what it is that we're looking at. Um, the image credits, I also include those as well so that the presenter can relay that information um, it's not always easy in the planetarium to display the credit information up on the screen, um, but certainly for um, for everything where, uh, well, honestly, for everything, uh, I make sure to have in the description uh, the credits for the image so that we can um, we can be certain of how we're using it and certainly want to give uh, kudos to whoever did the uh, image processing. So that's that's kind of neat to to see the four different views. Let me go back out to the photo journal site. Uh, frequently what I'll do is I'll just go to latest images and see if there's anything, um, anything new or what have you, um, new or looked at again. Sometimes they'll find an older image, even from, oh goodness, from some of the some of the exploration from when I was a kid, you know, some of the Voyager missions or the uh, um, some of those earlier Mars missions, and they'll find neat new ways to process the images that and it helps to reveal new information, you know, information that was there all along, but we didn't know it was there. And uh, I don't know if my husband is still on the chat, but he had taken an image of a galaxy and then later years later, went back through and uh, found detail in that image that he didn't know he had. So I thought that was really cool. So I definitely encourage people to to revisit uh, older older images and see what they can find. So that's a that's a fun website for it, the NASA Photo Journal. Okay, I will close that one out and I'll go on to NORLAB. And this is from the National Science Foundation. I can switch to the about page. Um, and you can see that it lists several different observatories that they, uh, oh, I see Jeff put in the chat that it was uh, M87 was the galaxy that he had the, the image of. And I thought, oh, that was awesome. It's still one of my, one of my favorite things to, to remember. So um, on this website, we have um, images of, about, and from a variety of different observatories. Um, so let me go to the images section and I usually go there's sort by ranking and sort by date. I usually change it to date or I have a link set up that goes directly to it. And here we see they have a lot of um, people in their different events, but also the people that uh, that work to support all these observatories. Beautiful nature photography. Uh, look at that, a hummingbird at Kitt Peak. So I'm pointing that out for my husband's benefit because he's also an amazing bird photographer. Um, cloud formation, sometimes historical photos. Really neat site to check out. Now, also in the uh, 
images, you can just search, say you want to search for pictures of galaxies, or you want to just search for uh, 360 panoramas of the uh, spaces around the observatories, which they're amazing. And they look really awesome in the planetarium dome. So if you uh, come see me, uh, you know, here at the planetarium, you can ask. And I usually have uh, one or two that I can find uh, that I have handy in the system. Just beautiful. Okay, that brings me to, I'm not going to close it because there's something I want to go back and look at later. Um, the uh, ESO site. So this is European Southern Observatory. And I do the same thing. Now, I also look at their videos, too. Let's see if I can do that. I'll go to their videos and the date and see a lot of their recent videos. And I can scroll down and usually I can find um, clips of uh, full dome content and what that is. That's stuff that's made in the fisheye view. So we put that in the planetarium and that's really what it's meant for. And then you, you'd feel like you're just surrounded by whatever the content is. And um, actually, this is one that I don't think I've uh, downloaded yet. So I will need to do that. Um, let's go back to the images. Here we go. And the date. All right. That is a cute picture. We'll go ahead and we'll talk about that a little bit. So the star trails, that's what you get if you set up a camera that uh, can take nice long exposure. And uh, sometimes you just leave it with the, the shutter open. And as the Earth turns, as the Earth rotates on its axis, and the camera is just sitting there relative to everything else on Earth, um, it looks like the sky is turning. But you're catching this as these star trails. It's just such a beautiful um, photography effect. And sometimes people will cover the shutter, open it again, cover it, open it so that the, the star trails are more like dots going around. So that's kind of a kind of a neat, uh, a, a neat photo of uh, one of the uh, sets of telescopes that they have. I'm gonna back out of that. And here you see different, so many, so many different uh, observatories uh, that they have in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, especially South America. Just incredible stuff. Stills from some of the videos that we saw. Oh, this is pretty cool. The, uh, uh, the lasers that they use in figuring out how much uh, the atmosphere is wavering and so they send they send the lasers, they measure how much the, the light is wavering, and they're able to then uh, adapt um, the, the signal coming in from the stars, from the starlight. And so they're able to um, figure out how the, uh, how the air is moving and account for it so that they get much sharper, clearer images. Very, very clever. And I love those really cool pictures for it. Um, also, you can search this by theme as well. So if you wanted some galaxies or some star clusters, nebulae. Beautiful space clouds. I call them space clouds. Supernova remnant. Yes. I love it. And this one, this image processing workflow, I've got this saved because I'm using it as inspiration for a theme for another of these uh, live streams. Um, probably not, let me look at my notes, probably not next week, maybe the week after. Um, I have to think about that, but it's really cool. A lot of these images, you can find uh, the raw images and then you can mix the colors yourself. You can see, okay, so this wavelength was assigned, was captured with this image. You can assign it a color. Same thing with, with other wavelengths. And then you put them together to get that final uh, image. In fact, I'll go ahead and just show you what we've got here. So clicking on the image, I've made a larger version. But let's say I wanted this one in the dome. I would probably not put this 
image up all by itself. I would probably um, take a larger version, um, much larger than a regular screen uh, resolution, and then I would cut into equal slices. And then in the dome, I would place those slices around the dome or put them together in a slide set so I could dissolve from the detector to the raw data to the reduced data. Maybe I'll do that. Let me uh, let me make a note on that. Image slice. Okay, because I, I, I can demonstrate that. That's a really, really good idea. I've done that for a couple, a couple of the infographics that they put out where it's a really long scrolling image. And in the dome, that doesn't really show up all that well because uh, the part that's close enough to read um, looks just bizarrely fish-eyed and the rest of it looks kind of like it's off. In the, so it looks like it's all bent. Well, I'll, I'll split it up and make it into uh, a slide set or something of a montage that goes around. So, um, yeah, I'll save that because that's pretty cool. Um, now, what I normally do is I look down here on the image formats and I can choose different sizes. Um, if I want uh, to look for a news release, I would uh, just click on that, open up uh, news release that goes along with it for more information. Um, it's, uh, as always, I get the uh, description and the uh, and the credits for it. I definitely encourage people to check out these sites for themselves if you have any interest, any interest at all, in um, how they get the images, the types of images. Uh, so that brings me to the last two sites, which have the same format uh, for the sites. And um, this is ESA Hubble and ESA Web. So um, ESA being the uh, European Space Agency and um, works closely with uh, with NASA and other space agencies. And same thing, you go to the images or the videos. And I select it by date, some lovely galaxies. They also have artist conceptions. So when I see this, I know this is not an actual um, photo or um, direct from the data, but this has been um, visualized. So this is an illustration and it's based on images that uh, we, we do have in this case from Hubble. And I'll go back to the listing and here you see some of the images that are uh, being talked about. I don't think I have these. Uh, oh, no, I do have these ones in the dome if we wanted to talk about them in our Prairie Skies program, which is Friday nights at 7. And it's uh, definitely my, my favorite to present because it's a little different every time, a little different every time. And it's also different depending on, you know, which presenter you have because we all have different uh, different styles and different uh, stories that are interesting to us at the time. Beautiful. You can search uh, specifically for galaxies or specifically for nebulas or um, if you have planets that you're interested in. I love these comparisons showing different uh, cloud bands of Jupiter at different times. Ah, yes, the double asteroid redirection test. And I'll pull up one of the annotated ones. Now, this is an example of one that I would try as it is, and then I would split it up if it doesn't look quite right in the dome uh, because we want to be able to either do a dissolve or show side by side. Um, but again, we always make sure that I have the description in there and the credits for anyone that wants to delve deeper. And uh, when I'm when I'm downloading graphics for use in the dome, um, the graphics cards in our system, they really like powers of two. So if uh, that means all my images that I use in there, um, if it doesn't need to be filling the entire dome, then I might go with uh, you know, 512 by 512 pixels, uh, 
Um, I used to go ahead and fill in the rest of that square with uh, just an alpha, blank alpha channel, but it uh, the later version of the software that we have in the dome uh, does make it a little easier to um, scale images on the fly as we're installing them into the library. So that's pretty cool. So I don't have to tell each one in a script to stretch it by a certain amount. It, it'll handle that. But I do need to make sure that the uh, longest dimension is either 512 or 1024. <laughs> Sorry, I almost said 1022. I'm like, wait, no, it's 1024 or 2048, et cetera. Um, for the uh, for panoramas that go all the way around our dome, those, um, what is it? I'm doing the math in my head and it's not working. Well, like 8192, I think it is. Um, and for a full dome, single full dome master for our system, so that would be an all sky, that we want it to be a 4096 by 4096. So it's a square, but then what we're showing is a circle inside that square. Um, and a lot of times the corners are used for uh, other information about the image that uh, would be just accessed offline somehow. So back to the uh, back to the website, it's looking at uh, Isa Hubble. Um, I'll also let me see, go back over to. Um, yeah, that'll that'll work. I'm going to come back to Isa Hubble. But I'm going to jump now to ESA Web. And same exact uh, interface. Let me go ahead, select the images, change to um, date. And this is quite lovely. I was looking at this earlier. Uh, this is the, let me see, I'll go ahead and put this here. And the Web Telescope, most of the images come out with the, um, from the near infrared camera or the mid infrared uh, instrument. So you've got near cam and NERI. And this one is a near cam image. And you see, I'm looking at the description here. I actually did look at this this morning, but then I don't know. I just, that was a few minutes, you know, that was what, an hour and a half ago. So totally, uh, totally blocked it out now. Uh, but same, same difference. Now, see here, this is a very large image. So I would need a smaller size to um, display in our dome, or I would need to slice the image up and then program it in to display in uh, adjacent segments. To, so that what's, gives the illusion of it being a much bigger image. All right, let me see on here. Um, additional information that they give about the object. Um, you can follow the links to these uh, these sites um, down here, the coordinates, uh, right ascension, declination. That's sort of like the equivalent to latitude and longitude in the sky. Um, the field of view, very tiny. Arc minutes is a very tiny angular measure. And then it tells you the orientation of it and has a, a, a compass uh, rose over here. Um, so down here on the image formats, this is where I would download. Um, if you're downloading the really big ones, they include the uh, the checksum. So if you're going to walk away and let it download for a while, you can then compare to make sure that you are getting the uh, file that you were planning to, to get. Um, wallpapers for different monitors. Uh, but here's the cool thing, and I'm going to delve into this next time, which is viewing it in ESA Sky. Um, you can also view in Worldwide Telescope, which I don't tend to use as much as I do ESA Sky. And ESA Sky is based on a piece of software called uh, Aladdin, and uh, it's here too. Um, Aladdin, Aladdin Light, these are something that you might want on your own website. You can embed them. And here I'm just zooming in, and it's showing me the sky. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely delve into that. So if I were to view that in ESA sky, it would load the ESA sky, um, sky software and would show that image and also allow us to find uh, other images from other telescopes. So we're going to spend most of the next uh, 
the next live stream, which I stream scream. Oh no. <laughs> the next live stream on, um, using ESA sky. And we will go ahead and link to it off of the, uh, um, ESA Hubble and ESA websites. But down here, this is the really fun part. If you want to see how the image is made, you want to just get a sense of that. Um, sometimes they include, these are all uh, from the near cam, but they assigned, uh, the images were all in infrared. Here's the wavelengths, and they were assigned different colors and then blended together. Sometimes they blend um, images from the web and the Hubble or other uh, telescopes where they were able to get uh, the uh, um, all of the um, you know the scaling and everything else standardized just right so they could stack them together. And wonderful uh, being able to to see how that's done. Let me go ahead and back out of this. So that's the near cam. I think this is, yes, this is the uh, mid-infrared instrument. Um, let me see, which, by the way, yes, if I click on the link for it, it will, for Miri, it will pop up. Hey, look at that. It shows you all about the um, mid-infrared instrument. Um, if you want more information on the object itself, you can click on the name of the object, and it does take you to... A, uh, an interface for a site that uh, astronomy and astronomy astronomers and astronomy researchers do use to get all kinds of information. This stores information on stars, galaxies, uh, nebulas, all kinds of information can be found uh, through this. This, uh, this site here is combining a whole bunch of different uh, different catalogs and yeah, it's a it's another rabbit hole all on its own. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to, you know, check out some of these other sites. And if something doesn't make sense, you know, you can uh, look it up. You can always Google something that you don't uh, that you don't understand and then get an explanation that way. Um, it, it truly is a rat, another rabbit hole all unto itself. So let me go ahead and back that up. And here the MIRI instrument, they're showing you down here how they uh, combined those images. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave us with clicking on ESA Sky. And it loads. Sometimes I go there directly. But if I go to it using... Uh, a link off of the ESA Hubble or the ESA web page. It sends me there. Um, I'm going to click away from that. I don't need to know about that information. Up here in the top right corner, there's a Sci mode and Explorer mode. If you go to the ESA Sky directly, you get a pop-up that asks you whether you want the uh, Sci mode or the Explorer mode. We are in Explorer mode. And um, in the upper left corner, uh, it has uh, shows you the Hubble images for available in the field of view and the web images. Now, I, I explained earlier that I use a dark mode on my browsers. Um, there really is a, uh, a web logo in there. Let me see if I can zoom in on the picture enough for you to see it back there. Eh, probably not. There it is. Yeah. OK, so there's the, the web logo. Uh, so it really is there. Um, you can also, uh, if you go into science mode, you get options to see not just the images, but all the available data for the region. And you can then search it by wavelength, by, uh, by telescope. It, it's really awesome. But let me go ahead and zoom out and just compare to the Hubble. See if there's any Hubble images in this area. Mm, nope. So... Um, I'll make sure to pick some examples for next week that have both the uh, both Hubble and web images that are taken in that field of view. So that will be next week. I want to thank you for checking this out. Um, if you're checking it out live, thank you so much. Uh, if not, uh, you can check it out, of course, in the recording. And I hope that's how you're watching it uh, as you sit there. Uh, but I will uh, set up another live stream for next Monday, hopefully at the same time, but we'll see. We'll see what time works out best. All right. Thank you so much.